father cannot do anything in this earth realm without permission. Now again, I realize that that statement is very, as I say, from, from, from an evangelical point of view, which is, when I say that, that just simply means taking in uh, account the main major denomination that we're familiar with down to the years. That that the evangelical church world. That this statement that I'm making that God can't do is is like is like me going out committing adultery to them. It's sin. Sinful to say that. Is anything too hard for the Lord, our sovereign Lord? You have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. The whole point is I'm trying to get you to see, to get you out of this malaise of thinking that Jesus and the disciples were poor and then relating that to you, thinking that you as a child of God have to follow Jesus. The Bible says that he has left us an example that we should follow his steps. That's the reason why I drive a Rolls Royce. I'm following Jesus' steps. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. When I first got saved, they didn't tell me I could do anything. They just, what they told me to do is that whenever I prayed, I should always say the will of the Lord be done. Now, doesn't that sound humble? It does. Sounds like humility. It's really stupidity. I mean, you know, you, you, you really, we, we insult God. I mean, we really do insult our Heavenly Father. We do, we, we, we really insult Him without Him realizing it. If you have to say that, if it be thy will or thy will be done, if you have to say that, then you're calling God a fool. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. And if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. My Father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, thy will be done. The thing that redeemed us was not Jesus being nailed to the cross. His spirit and soul went in to Hades. And he walked in through the door of Hades. Satan was seated on his throne with a sickening grin on his face. His lip twisted in grotesque triumph. And all the imps of hell were dancing a jig. And the word came, we got him now. We've defeated the plan of God. And the devil was sitting there saying, I told you, if you follow me, I'd lead you to victory. We got him now. And they wrapped their grimy hands and the chains of hell itself around Jesus. And they consigned him to one of the cells in the Hades section of the underworld. And then Satan and his demon host went on a three-day drunk. They thought they had it. They had defeated and thwarted the plan of Almighty God. And Jesus sat there, as it were, immobile, not saying a word, not doing anything, except serving our sentence. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the written code with his regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth 
or things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. He was born again in the very pit of hell itself and became the first man to be born again. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another, only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even though we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to that which you received, let him be accursed.